Welcome to today's video, where we're going to explore the fascinating world of the European Parliament and European Commission. We'll be diving deep into their roles and functions within the European Union. So buckle up, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, and let's embark on this educational adventure together. Alright, history buffs, let's travel back in time to unravel the fascinating story of how the European Union, the European Parliament, and the European Commission came to be. Origins of the European Union The seeds of the European Union were sown in the aftermath of World War II. Europe lay in ruins, and its leaders realized that the key to rebuilding and preventing future conflict was to strengthen cooperation among nations. In 1950, French Foreign Minister Robert Schuman proposed the creation of the European Coal and Steel Community ECSC, to pull the coal and steel resources of France, Germany, and other European countries. The Creation of the European Parliament and European Commission Fast forward to 1957, when the Treaty of Rome was signed, establishing the European Economic Community EEC, and the European Atomic Energy Community Euridum. The EEC aimed to create a common market among its member states, while Eurodom sought to coordinate research and development in the field of nuclear energy. It was during this period that the European Parliament and European Commission began to take shape. The European Parliament started as the Assembly of the EEC, a consultative body composed of representatives from national parliaments. Meanwhile, the European Commission, originally called the High Authority in the ECSC and the Commission of the EEC in Eurodom, emerged as the executive arm responsible for implementing the policies and decisions of these communities. Key Milestones and Developments The 1970s As the 1970s rolled in, the European Parliament took its first steps toward becoming a more democratic institution. The 1979 European elections marked the first time that citizens of the member states directly elected their representatives to the Parliament. This increased the Parliament's legitimacy and influence within the EU. The 1980s, the Single European Act of 1986 brought further integration by setting the stage for the creation of a single market, allowing for the free movement of goods, services, capital, and people across member states. This act also increased the European Parliament's legislative powers, enabling it to work more closely with the European Commission and the Council of the European Union. The 1990s, the Maastricht Treaty of 1992 was a game-changer, officially establishing the European Union and laying the groundwork for the creation of the euro, the EU's common currency. This treaty also introduced the concept of European citizenship and expanded the European Parliament's legislative powers even further. The 2000s, the 21st century saw the European Union grow and evolve, with the Treaty of Lisbon in 2007 streamlining the EU's institutions and decision-making processes. This treaty further strengthened the European Parliament's legislative and budgetary powers and clarified the roles of the European Commission and other EU institutions. The European Parliament, Role and Function Now that we've set the stage with a historical overview, let's dive into the nitty-gritty of the European Parliament's roles and functions. The Parliament has three main powers, legislative, budgetary, and supervisory. Legislative Powers the European Parliament works closely with the European Commission and the Council of the European Union in shaping the laws and policies that govern the EU. The Parliament's legislative power is exercised through the Ordinary Legislative Procedure, also known as co-decision. In this process, the Parliament and the Council jointly adopt legislation, ensuring that both institutions have an equal say in the final outcome. Budgetary Powers the European Parliament shares budgetary authority with the Council, making it a crucial player in determining how the EU's budget is allocated. This involves negotiating and approving the annual budget, as well as providing oversight and control over EU expenditure. The Parliament's budgetary power ensures that EU funds are used efficiently and effectively to achieve the Union's goals and priorities. Supervisory Powers The European Parliament plays a key role in holding other EU institutions accountable. For example, it has the power to approve or reject the appointment of the European Commission and its president. The Parliament also exercises oversight over the Commission's work through regular question-and-answer sessions, known as Commissioner's Question Time, and by examining reports on the implementation of EU policies and programs. Composition and Organization The European Parliament comprises a diverse mix of politicians, with its structure reflecting the wide range of political views across the EU. 
members of the European Parliament, MEPs currently, there are 705 MEPs, each elected to represent the citizens of the EU's 27 member states. The number of MEPs per country is determined by a system of digressive proportionality, meaning that larger countries have more MEPs, but smaller countries have a greater number of MEPs relative to their population size. Political groups, MEPs are organized into political groups based on their political affiliations. These groups span the entire political spectrum, from far left to far right. To form a political group, at least 25 MEPs from a minimum of seven different member states must come together. Currently, there are seven recognized political groups in the European Parliament. Committees and Delegations The European Parliament has 20 standing committees, each specializing in a specific policy area, such as foreign affairs, economic and monetary affairs, or the environment. These committees play a critical role in the legislative process by examining proposed legislation and preparing reports for the Parliament's plenary sessions. Additionally, the Parliament has delegations responsible for maintaining relations with non-EU countries and international organizations. Elections and Representation The electoral process and representation in the European Parliament are essential for understanding how EU citizens shape the policies and decisions of the Union. Electoral process Every five years, EU citizens have the opportunity to vote for their representatives in the European Parliament. Each member state has its own rules for electing MEPs but they must all follow the principle of proportional representation. This ensures that the number of seats allocated to each political party is proportional to the number of votes they receive. Voter turnout and trends Voter turnout in European Parliament elections has traditionally been lower than in national elections, with an average turnout of around 50% since the first direct elections in 1979. However, recent years have seen a slight increase in voter interest, with the 2019 elections registering a turnout of 51%, the highest since 1994. Impact on EU policy The composition of the European Parliament has a direct impact on the EU's policy direction. As the balance of power shifts between political groups, so too does the focus and priorities of the Parliament. For example, a Parliament dominated by centre-right and centre-left parties may prioritise economic growth and fiscal responsibility, while a Parliament with a strong presence of green and progressive parties may emphasise environmental protection and social justice. The electoral process also influences the European Commission, as the political group with the most seats in the Parliament has a significant say in the nomination of the Commission's president. This ensures that the executive branch of the EU reflects the political preferences of the citizens, as expressed through their elected representatives. Moreover, the European Parliament's composition affects its relationship with the Council of the European Union, which represents the governments of the member states. When the Parliament and the Council share similar policy priorities, they are more likely to work together. Effectively in the legislative process. Conversely, when their priorities diverge, the negotiation and adoption of legislation may become more challenging. In conclusion, the European Parliament plays a vital role in shaping the European Union's policies and priorities. Its legislative, budgetary, and supervisory powers ensure that the voices of EU citizens are heard and that other EU institutions are held accountable. The Parliament's diverse composition, organization, and electoral process guarantee that the interests of all member states are represented, while also having a direct impact on the direction of EU policy. As we continue to explore the workings of the European Union, the significance of the European Parliament's role will become even more apparent. The European Commission Role and Function Now, let's turn our attention to the European Commission, the engine driving the European Union's policy-making process. Its primary roles and functions include executive powers, policy development and implementation, and enforcing EU law. Executive powers As the EU's executive body, the European Commission is responsible for managing the day-to-day -day affairs of the Union. It oversees the implementation of policies and decisions, manages EU funds, and represents the EU in international negotiations, such as trade agreements and climate change accords. Policy development and implementation the European Commission is the main initiator of EU legislation, setting the policy agenda and proposing new laws and initiatives. It works closely with the European Parliament and the Council of the European Union in the legislative process, ensuring that the final adopted legislation aligns with the overall objectives and priorities of the EU. 
Enforcing EU law, the European Commission also plays a crucial role in ensuring that EU laws are applied and enforced consistently across all member states. It monitors compliance with EU rules, investigates potential infringements, and can take legal action against member states that fail to meet their obligations. Composition and Organization The European Commission is composed of a diverse group of individuals who represent the interests of the EU's member states and work together to achieve the Union's objectives. Commissioners, the European Commission consists of 27 commissioners, one from each member state, including the President of the European Commission. Each commissioner is responsible for a specific policy area, such as agriculture, trade, or digital affairs, and acts independently of their home country's government, ensuring that they prioritize the interests of the EU as a whole. President of the European Commission The President of the European Commission is the institution's most visible and influential figure. They set the Commission's policy agenda, coordinate the work of the commissioners, represent the Commission at the highest levels, both within the EU and internationally, and ensure the smooth functioning of the institution. Directorates General The European Commission is organized into various Directorates General DGs, each responsible for a specific policy area. Each DG is led by a Director General, who reports to the Commissioner in charge of that policy area. The DGs prepare legislative proposals, manage EU funds, and develop and implement policies in their respective fields. Appointment and Accountability The appointment and accountability of the European Commission are crucial to ensuring that it operates effectively and remains responsive to the needs and concerns of EU citizens. Nomination and Confirmation Process The nomination and confirmation of the European Commission is a multi-step process that begins with the nomination of the President of the European Commission by the European Council taking into account the results of the European Parliament elections. The nominated candidate must then be approved by the European Parliament. Once the President is confirmed, they work together with the Member States to select the Commissioners. The full Commission, including the President, is then subject to a vote of approval by the European Parliament before it can officially begin its term. Relationship with the European Parliament The European Commission is accountable to the European Parliament, which has the power to dismiss the entire Commission through a vote of no confidence. This ensures that the Commission remains responsive to the priorities and concerns of EU citizens, as represented by their elected representatives in the Parliament. The Parliament also exercises oversight over the Commission's work through regular question-and-answer sessions and by examining reports on the implementation of EU policies and programs. In summary, the European Commission is a vital institution in the European Union's policy-making process. Its executive powers, policy development and implementation, and enforcement of EU law ensure that the EU functions smoothly and effectively. The Commission's composition, organization, and appointment process guarantee that it remains accountable to EU citizens. The European Union, including its key institutions such as the European Parliament and the European Commission, faces a number of challenges and opportunities in today's rapidly changing world. In this section, we'll explore the impact of Brexit, climate change policies, migration and border control, and the rise of populism on the EU and its institutions. Impact of Brexit Brexit, the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union, has had significant repercussions for both the EU and its institutions. The European Parliament has seen a reshuffling of seats and political groups due to the withdrawal of British MEPs, and the European Commission has had to adapt to the loss of one of its largest member states. Brexit has also prompted the EU to reevaluate its internal policies and processes, in order to strengthen unity among the remaining member states and address concerns about the future direction of the Union. Climate Change Policies The European Union has long been a global leader in the fight against climate change, and the European Parliament and Commission play crucial roles in shaping and implementing the EU's climate policies. The European Green Deal, a comprehensive plan to make the EU climate neutral by 2050, demonstrates the Union's commitment to tackling this urgent global challenge. Both the Parliament and the Commission are responsible for adopting and enforcing ambitious targets and measures related to emissions reductions, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and biodiversity protection, among others. As the urgency of addressing climate change grows, these institutions will continue to play a central role in driving progress and promoting sustainable development across the Union. Migration and Border Control The European Union has experienced significant migration and refugee flows in recent years, particularly during the 2015-2016 migration crisis. 
this has put pressure on the EU's institutions to develop and implement effective policies for managing migration and border control. The European Parliament and Commission have been at the forefront of these efforts, working to balance humanitarian concerns with security and integration challenges. Key initiatives include the reform of the common European asylum system, strengthening the EU's external borders, and addressing the root causes of migration through international cooperation and development assistance. Moving forward, these institutions will need to continue refining and implementing migration and border control policies that respect human rights while ensuring the security and stability of the EU. The Rise of Populism and Its Effects on EU Institutions The rise of populist movements in parties across Europe has had a noticeable impact on the EU's institutions, including the European Parliament and the European Commission. Populist parties often express skepticism about the EU's role and question the benefits of European integration. As these parties gain representation in the European Parliament, they can influence the direction of EU policies and legislation, sometimes pushing for more nationalistic or protectionist measures. The rise of populism can also affect the European Commission, as it seeks to balance the diverse interests and priorities of its member states. In response to these challenges, both the Parliament and the Commission must continue to demonstrate the value of European cooperation and integration, while also addressing the legitimate concerns of EU citizens about issues such as economic inequality, security, and cultural identity. As we have seen throughout this deep dive into the European Parliament and European Commission, these two key institutions play an essential role in shaping the future of the European Union. They serve as the voice of EU citizens, ensure the smooth functioning of the Union, and strive to address the many challenges and opportunities that arise in a rapidly changing world. From their historical origins to their current responsibilities, the European Parliament and European Commission have evolved to meet the diverse needs of the EU's member states and citizens. They have navigated complex issues such as Brexit, climate change policies, migration and border control, and the rise of populism, all while working to maintain unity and cooperation within the Union. In conclusion, understanding the role and function of the European Parliament and European Commission is crucial for appreciating the intricacies of the European Union's decision-making process and its impact on the lives of EU citizens. As we move forward in an increasingly interconnected world, these institutions will continue to play a central role in shaping the policies and priorities that will determine the future of Europe. By engaging with these institutions and participating in the democratic processes that underpin them, EU citizens can help to build a more resilient, inclusive, and prosperous European Union for generations to come.